on Hawaiian punch Know you like all this gush I know you can't get enough Sip, sipping on Hawaiian punch, ay. Hey, my name is Adeline Warren and you're listening to Girl Talk I like to say that I'm the big sister of the internet. You can watch me fuck up all you want, but hey, maybe we can learn something from it. I hope you enjoy. Hey, bitch. How you doing? I hope you're doing well. As you can tell by the title of this podcast episode, I really wanted to touch on probably the most touchy subject that everybody has an opinion on and everybody can get offended on really easily. But I just want to talk about it because I feel like growing up, my family would like avoid the subject of money just because you know we were living like paycheck to paycheck there were times where we were like living in our rv and um i feel like if you haven't been watching me for you know the past couple of years growing up on youtube like you know you saw the house my mom had a house and stuff like that which was i'm so grateful for but there were times where we couldn't afford a lot and there were times where I would Google, and this is why I'm making this video, because my 13-year-old self would Google how to make money as a 13-year-old or how to make money easily or like easy ways to make money. I was obsessed with watching those types of videos and I was, you know, I did social media and I didn't think that it was something that you can make money off of. I was just obsessed with like Bethany Moda and Juicy Star 07 and it was like one of my hobbies and I think my first paycheck like I don't even remember how much I made on my first YouTube paycheck. They're probably like six dollars. I don't know. I could try I could try and find my first ever paycheck with YouTube, but it was super, super, super low. YouTube isn't the type of thing where, you know, you go on it and then suddenly you're an influencer and you're making like gazillions and gazillions of dollars. Like it doesn't work like that unless, you know, you're Alex Earl or someone that blow, blows up overnight. But I don't even necessarily feel like that's a good thing. I feel like the faster you blow up, the faster you fall. I don't know. Um, but enough talk about being an influencer because, you know, not everybody wants to be an influencer. Excel gum and ASMR. Search Excel Gum on Spotify now and choose one of four ASMR audio experiences. Because everybody needs good study partners. We've officially made it to December, which means it's time for the 12 days of deals at Honey Love, our go-to for bras and shapewear. From December 1st to the 12th, Honey Love will be dropping new limited time deals nearly every single day, so you don't want to miss out. This holiday season, I'm especially thankful for Honey Love because there's nothing worse than suffering caused by uncomfortable bras or shapewear. Honey Love has revolutionized the bra and shapewear game. Say goodbye to uncomfortable underwire and bulky fabrics that trap the heat. Plus, they made the fabric so soft so you won't want to take it off and as for their shapewear they use targeted compression technology so that you can wear effective shapewear without feeling like you're suffocating you'll immediately feel and see the difference so go get yourself the gift of comfort and support at a discounted rate visit honeylove.com to shop their once a year december deals and let them know that we sent you when the survey asks. I absolutely hate uncomfortable bras. I remember one time the bra was so overworn that I had to deal with the underwire poking my skin all day. Isn't that the worst? That's why I love Honey Love. It's so comfortable to wear. I have no underwire and it's so flattering. And if you're tired of bras that cause a bulging in the back, Honey Love's bras are designed with a back smoothing fabric to prevent bra bulge. And when it comes to shapewear, Honey Love's best selling superpower short is the go-to. It is targeted compression technology that distinguishes between areas where you want more support and areas that you need less compression. Their Signature X targets and sculpts your midsection without squeezing your natural curves. Plus, the best part is it won't ever roll up or down thanks to the flexible boning hidden in the side seams. So, treat yourself off to the best bras and shapewear on the market and save up to 20% off site-wide at honeylove.com slash girltalk this month only. And after your purchase, they'll ask you where you heard about them. Please support our show and tell them that we sent you. It's time to ditch the underwire for good thanks to Honey Love. I came up with a couple ideas about how to make money um, because, you know, it's the holiday season and everybody can use a little extra money. Um, and I think the first thing that I wanted to say is 
the average millionaire has seven streams of income and the average American has one. So ask yourself, how many streams of income do you have? And comparing it to millionaires out there, people who are making, you know, super great amounts of money and asking yourself like, you know, of course, like, you know, climbing the corporate ladder and like going to school and stuff like that, it definitely helps. But things that will set you up for success are um, passive incomes and things that will just make you money without you really trying. And that doesn't necessarily mean having like seven full jobs, like taking up another job on the side and taking up a job. Like nobody has time for that. We all have the same amount of time in the day as Beyonce and Beyonce does not have time to do seven jobs. <laughs> it's all of her passive income. Um, and you don't have to do seven right away. You can start out with, you know, two this year and then three next year and four the next year. Um, but I really feel like what has helped me financially so much is diversifying my income and finding different ways to make money so that, you know, social media is not reliable. And, you know, I love social media as a job. And I was thinking about doing a course, but I don't know. The reason why I'm doing this podcast, I was like, oh, should I do a course on this? And I was like, that's literally so stupid because the people who want to listen to like this type of podcast and like listen to this advice are people who don't really have that much money and they want to start making more money. So that's why I wanted to make this podcast and make it free so that people can listen to it because I really believe anything that you want to learn, you could probably find on a podcast or YouTube or Google or something. Of course, school is great, but if you don't have the means to go to school and you don't have the means to take a course or a $1,000 course or whatever it is, a lot of the times you just find all of the information online for free. Um, but when I was younger, this is a little story time, I like begged my dad because I really, really, really wanted this $50 Victoria's Secret backpack. It's so ingrained in my brain. I've always wanted that backpack. And I was like, dad, like I'll work as a newspaper girl. Like I'll hand out the newspapers. And he's like, are you going to do it in the snow? Are you going to do it in the rain? Because I think it was like minimum wage. I'd be making like $10. Um, and I was like, yes, dad, like I really, really, really want to do it. And he was like, <laughs> he didn't let me do it. And I'm so upset because I think that would have been really great for me to just learn. And um, but yeah, it also wouldn't be great if I was like, you know, a teenager and I just like slept in one day and didn't deliver the newspaper and I probably got fired. But that would have been a great learning experience, too. So, dad, I wish you would have let me do that job. But during that time, I would always Google like different ways to make money. And as much as I want to recommend you to like pick up a newspaper job or pick up another job on the side, a lot of the times that's just not possible. Like, you know, we have our jobs, say you work like nine to five and you're barely left any time for yourself. You're barely left any time to like spend time with your family or spend time with your dog or relax or you know, do your own thing on the weekends because life is not meant to work. We're supposed to live life and we're supposed to go to concerts and hang out with our friends. So I want to recommend you to make monies, but not necessarily like pick up another job because life is meant to be lived. So what is passive income? Passive income, I'm just going to read this definition online right now. It says earnings derived from a rental property, limited partnership, or other enterprise in which a person is not actively involved. So it's basically a way for you to make money where you're not actively involved and you're just kind of making money by setting up a certain thing, whether it's a rental property, which, you know, we could get into other ways that are more free and more <laughs> cheap because I know not everyone can afford a rental property or you know things like putting your money into stocks and I know things like stocks can be very like confusing and whatever but I can break it down for you or um, creating a course that's also passive income because you make it one time and you sell it forever and you're making money without you actually doing any work and everything is automatic that's basically what passive income is I wrote down some passive income ideas on my phone. Um, these are passive incomes for anyone to do that is cheap or it could be free because a lot of passive income things that I've seen, I like Googled it. It's like buy a condo and rent it out. It's like not 
I feel like most people don't have the money. If you're trying to get passive income, they don't have the money to buy a condo. So these are just free things that I found online and also free things that I just thought up of in my head because bitch if there's anything about me bitch I'm a fucking hustler like I will work for the money and I will work really hard I'll show up on time if something if you're gonna pay me like bitch I'm a fucking hustler so ever since I was 13 (laughs) so I like came up with a couple ideas and I wanted to um just read them out first of all I put find free things on Facebook market and sell it for a profit Um, This is great. If you're already on your phone listening to this podcast, you have access to Facebook market and there's so many things that are free. I was shook. Go on the free tab on Facebook market and you're going to be shocked. Some people don't even realize what they have. Even go on Facebook market and search up very vague things. Like I feel like if you search up, for example, like Chanel classic flap 22 or whatever size with a lot of description, you'll find it. They have pretty much the right price point but if if someone doesn't know what they have a lot of the times they'll put cc bag or chanel bag very vague um descriptions and very vague titles and you could kind of search and see if you're really into something like I personally love bags and I can like go on eBay and like find the best prices and I swear there's a lot of bags that I have that I can flip for way more money if there's anything that you're interested in, when whether it's like Pokemon cards um anything that goes up in value I don't want to recommend this but like concert tickets actually fuck people who sell concert tickets for more because that's actually insane um anything that you're really interested if you're a guy maybe like shoes um there's so many things that go up in value and a lot of the times you go on facebook market maybe they're free maybe they're really cheap and you could get it and resell it for a higher price that's a great way for passive income um if you have extra room in your house or extra room in your condo or place definitely rent it out to a friend even if you have a couch and you're like hey do you want to sleep on my couch for like two hundred dollars a month like that's an extra two hundred dollars um if you're not using your car I wish I did this back in the day there's lots of apps that you can rent your car out it's not the best because people put you know miles on your car and you know whatever but a lot of times if you have a decent car you can rent it out for a good amount of money and like I remember when I got in a car accident um the insurance company gave me x amount of dollars to spend and girl I racked it up I racked it up I got a good ass car I got a fucking g-wagon I mean they didn't cover the g-wagon but I, <laughs> I spent some of my money too but hey like if you have a car and it works like I would recommend rent- renting it out if you're like out of town or you're not using that car or it's just sitting there Um, same with if you're, if you have nice dresses and it doesn't even have to be like Chanel dresses or Versace dresses. Like I literally see girls renting out their IMG addresses or even just sold out dresses. Um, any nice dresses that you have, I see people list it on Depop, which I don't know if it's allowed on Depop, but I'm sure that there's apps where you can rent out your stuff. Even if you have like a nice bag or any nice things, you can definitely rent it out. Um, and people you just ship it to them they pay you and then they ship it back and you pray that they took good care of it (laughs) um next step i put up promote that you're a graphic designer um it's so easy to use canva canva is free and there's so many easy templates like there's so many times where my boyfriend he works at this company and they pay their graphic designer like hundreds of thousands of dollars a year and sometimes i look at their shit and i'm like damn i could have did something literally better than this on canva and he's like stop you're you're just being mean adeline and i'd literally i'd go on canva and i'd make a little graphic design thing and he's like damn like you made that in like five minutes and i'm like seriously like Graphic designers, I mean, I don't want to take away from graphic designers jobs and I don't want to take away from, you know, because it is really hard. A lot of the graphic designer work is really hard, but I feel like a lot of people are just overpaying or they don't realize the importance of graphic design, um, whether it's like promoting their dog walking business or um, babysitting business or, you know, whatever business people underestimate. Canva, 
Canva is so easy and you could like promote that you're a graphic designer to your friends, to your family on Facebook, on those Facebook groups and be like, hey, I'm a graphic designer. I charge like, you know, X amount. This is like my past work. I, and yeah, <laughs> I don't know. It's so easy. You could do like um, you could do resumes. You could make resumes for people. You can do um, like logos, um, invitations, anything like that. They're all on Canva and there's so many templates that you can use. Just edit it a little bit and make it your own. And people are literally going to think that you're a graphic designer, even though it's literally just Canva. Same with ChatGBT. Like nobody, nobody takes advantage of ChatGBT as much as they should. Um, but yeah, I put make resumes. Um, this is something that I thought was very interesting and I... I don't know. It's it's either going to make zero money or it can make you a lot of money. I put download royalty free Christmas music and upload it to YouTube with some sort of graphic. Do you know the amount of times that I just leave on Christmas music and you have to watch an ad before so you get paid through YouTube, bitch? Like you can seriously make either like a lot of money or you probably, you know, there'd be times when you don't make any money. But if you hit the algorithm at a certain time, Girl, you can make so much money. Those videos have like millions of views every single year. Um, same with dog videos. Like I seriously, when I leave Blue at Home Alone, I always put on TV for dogs. Those are like, just think of like, even like calming music, relaxing music, yoga music, meditation music, like anything like that. Download the royalty free and then upload it to YouTube, monetize it. And bitch, I don't know how legal this is, but do your research, but I'm pretty sure I've seen people do that before. Um, don't sue me if you get sued, okay? I'm not a professional. Do your own research. Um, next up, I put create a savings account. There's so many of my friends and they don't have savings account and I literally want to like bash my head against the wall. Bitch, if you don't have a savings account in your bank account, first of all, I would really recommend you to set up your bank this way. So have a checking account. This is the money that you could just spend. Um, and it could be on like groceries, on rent, on fun things, on Hello Kitty, whatever you want. And then create a savings account. This is the money that you cannot touch and it goes straight into investments. I really recommend the um, S&P 500. It goes up around 7.5% within at least the last five years, 2018 to 2022, I wrote down. So if you have $1,000 in that account, you make $75 for doing nothing and just leaving that account, that money in that account, as opposed to just leaving it in your checking account and paying the bank a fee, bitch, instead of losing money you're making money like 75 free dollars if you have a thousand dollars and then if you have two thousand dollars you can make 150 and like so on so on it's around 7.5 percent don't sue me look into um <laughs> look into the s p 500 but that one's a really good one it, it's also like mutual funds um and it, it's just a very safe stock and you know sometimes it goes up sometimes it goes down whatever you do if the stock is really down. Like say you put in a thousand and is at like 900. Don't take the money out. Just leave it there. Those types of stocks are meant to stay in there for years. So don't freak out if it goes down because it goes up, it goes down, it goes up, it goes down, it goes down. But for the most part, it goes up. We've officially made it to December, which means it's time for the 12 days of deals at Honey Love, our go-to for bras and shapewear. From December 1st to the 12th, Honey Love will be dropping new limited time deals nearly every single day, so you don't want to miss out. This holiday season, I'm especially thankful for Honey Love because there's nothing worse than suffering caused by uncomfortable bras or shapewear. Honey Love has revolutionized the bra and shapewear game. Say goodbye to uncomfortable underwire and bulky fabrics that trap the heat. Plus, they made the fabric so soft so you won't want to take it off and as for their shapewear they use targeted compression technology so that you can wear effective shapewear without feeling like you're suffocating you'll immediately feel and see the difference so go get yourself the gift of comfort and support at a discounted rate visit honeylove.com to shop their once a year december deals and let them know that we sent you when the survey asks. I absolutely hate uncomfortable bras. I remember one time the bra was so overworn that I had to deal with the underwire poking my skin all day. Isn't that the worst? That's why I love Honey Love. It's so comfortable to wear. I have no underwire and it's so flattering. You know that feeling after a long day and you immediately want to take your bra off? With Honey Love, you'll never have that experience again. Honey Love's best-selling crossover bra is so 
comfortable. I'm sure this is going to be your new go-to. This bra gives all the support of traditional bras without using any underwires. Plus, mesh detailing adds a touch of sexy. This is the one bra that you'll actually enjoy wearing and won't want to take off. And if you're tired of bras that cause a bulging in the back, Honey Love's bras are designed with a back smoothing fabric to prevent bra bulge. Check out their V-neck bra for a totally smooth fit under clothing. It's the ultimate t-shirt bra. And when it comes to shapewear, Honey Love's best-selling superpower short is the go-to. It is targeted compression technology that distinguishes between areas where you want more support and areas that you need less compression. Their Signature X targets and sculpts your midsection without squeezing your natural curves. Plus, the best part is it won't ever roll up or down thanks to the flexible boning hidden in the side seams. Honey Love is just as easy to put on as it is to take off. Shapewear shouldn't be hard, so their products make you look good and feel good. So treat yourself off to the best bras and shapewear on the market and save up to 20% off site-wide at honeylove.com slash girl talk this month only. And after your purchase, they'll ask you where you heard about them. Please support our show and tell them that we sent you. It's time to ditch the underwire for good. Thanks to Honey Love. Say my name when you go in it. And then the last thing for your bank, I would really recommend you getting a credit card and just set up automatic payments every single month. You don't have to pay off your credit card every single time that you use it. That is really good, though, if you want to get good credit. But I really recommend you set up because we all forget, right? So I would recommend whatever your monthly, um, what do you call it? Your monthly payment has to be just set that up automatically to come out of your checking account but I really recommend depending on how much you make I would put a good amount in your checking and a good amount in your savings like in an ideal world I would say like if you can put at least I don't know whatever it is that you make I would say take 20 to 50 percent of your money and put it into your savings account if you can and I'm not saying don't drink Starbucks I'm not saying to you know penny pinch because something that I will always remember that someone told me is it's so much easier to make ten thousand dollars than it is to save ten thousand dollars and if we're penny pinching and we're like I can't get Starbucks and I can't go out and I can't go to the movies and I can't spend five dollars on popcorn it's like how is that a life worth living you know Spend your money the way that you want. It's just instead of being in that lack mindset, which I feel like I grew up with and my family taught me and it's like, you know, money doesn't grow on trees and we have to limit our spending. We have to, you know, do, 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 do. That's how I grew up. And it took me years to get out of that, you know, headspace of being like, stop, stop, you know, maybe that's why I'm a shopaholic. I honestly really need to go to therapy for this, but... (laughs) That's for another episode. Um, I tried to get out of that mindset of like lack and lacking and um, not having enough and having to penny pinch and having to save to believing that money is abundant and money will always come to me. Whatever I spend, it will come back to me three times the amount. Like that is the head space that I'm in. And like maybe it is a little delusional, but I'm so much happier now and I live my life. And, you know, maybe I go out to, you know, whatever I go to this event and I meet a friend and then we do a collab together and that gets me more money or like it it gets me a connection to someone they know and you know I need a new distributor for girls sporting girls so maybe I meet a friend out and they introduce me to you know uh, another manufacturer whatever it is don't live in that like lack mindset because I feel like I was like that for so long it doesn't get you anywhere be delusional. Honestly, you know what it is? It's the people that you're like, how the fuck are you in Mexico? It's, you know, those like TikToks and it's like your unemployed friend on a random Wednesday and they're like in Mexico living life, like, (laughs) you know, whatever. It's because they're in that mindset. I have friends like that. And I swear, like they never know, like you're always like, what in the world? Like, how are you able to afford that? But it's because they're in that mindset that money will always come to them and money will always come with them and it, it also those types of people they're always hustlers like I swear my one friend I'm not gonna out her but she I'm always like she's not unemployed but she has her job she's freelance so she does her own thing and sometimes I'm like girl like like she worries me I'm like girl how are you making money how are you able to like pay rent she's always out living her life in Cabo always living her life out and about in the city you know getting drinks and I'm like I think that's the way to live life and that's the way to build connections because I really feel like 
going out into the world and building connections and being nice to people and finding people that have other connections um, and people that genuinely really like you is almost more important than school. I feel like it's who you know and not so much what you know, even though I do re really, I school is really good and I don't want to, you know, discredit that, but school is fucking expensive. Like it's so insane to me, the prices of school. And I honestly feel like, you know, maybe this is like super bad advice. Maybe this is just me because I, I mean, I went to makeup school, bitch. Like I, I didn't go to like school, school. Like I didn't go to a crazy university or college or anything. Um, but I really don't think if you're struggling with money, I really think it's more important to make connections and meet people on LinkedIn and um, be friendly, be friendly to everyone that you meet, go out to events, meet people, especially like entrepreneur events. I'm always down for a, like a, a woman entrepreneur event where you can meet and mingle pe with people. Um, even like my brother, for example, like he's in the film industry, um, and he spent thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on education. I remember we were at this film event and I was like, Brayden, this film event that we're going to, I think it was like a Toronto International Film Festival event. He was like my plus one. And I was like so excited to bring him because he's in that industry. And I was like, Brayden, everything that you learn in school, nothing is important as this moment right here you need to network with every single person in this room you need to pr even if you're not extroverted pretend to be extroverted i'd rather be the annoying person than the person that is like so quiet and you forget about them and i was like brayden you need to literally introduce yourself to every single person here and you need to lie and scheme your way through everything <laughs> I, didn't, well, I didn't say it like that but i basically like i went up to these people who were doing interviews and I was like, hey, this is my brother. He's a very big film director. He's um, he's won multiple awards for film. Um, let me know if you want to interview him. And every single person said yes. And imagine if he because he wasn't on the list or anything. There was like a list of people that you had to interview and, you know, they interviewed me. But I went up to them and I was like, hey, this is my brother. Like, you really need to interview him. Um, he's like a really up and coming, you know, director. He's won so many awards and they interviewed him and all of his stuff is on YouTube and it's so great. It's great for visibility. It's great for people to, um, find him. It's great for, you know, showing, you know, clients, all the things that you've been to and all the things that you've done. Bitch, networking is fucking everything. You know, I feel like for a good majority of jobs, but if you want to be an entrepreneur or freelancer, do your own thing. Networking is absolutely everything. And this is why I don't understand when people are like mean clout chasers, because I swear to God, if you're a clout chaser, just be nice to everyone. Like the fuck? How does it make sense to only be nice to people who have clout or only make sense to be nice to people who have money when people are always growing and people are always you know, making more money and people are always blowing up out of nowhere. Like, why the fuck wouldn't you just be nice to everyone? Like, it just it doesn't make sense to me. If you're a clout chaser or if you're just a person in the scene, just fucking be nice to everyone. Like the fuck? That's the only way that you're ever going to get far in life is just by being a nice human. And, you know, things small things like, hey, like I'm always here if you need to talk. Hey, like um, I have this really great recommendation. I would love to send it to you or like, hey, so even sending someone a birthday present that shit is so important i feel like this whole podcast has been like a whole networking episode but it's really important um there's this one person that used to work at nyx cosmetics back in the day and i'm not gonna say his name because i don't want to like out of her anything <laughs> he works at i think he works at rare now rare beauty but back in the day when NYX was like a very up and coming company, I got this person a birthday gift. And years later, I'm saying like 10 years later, um, they went out to me and they're like, Adeline, you're the only influencer that has ever remembered my birthday and got me a birthday present. Like, seriously, that shit means so much to me. And like, I'll never forget that. It's little things like that. It wasn't it, like I it's not like I sent him like a huge like fucking Kylie Jenner flower arrangement. Like, I, I think I literally just got him. Um, it was AMC tickets um, because I knew that he really likes watching movies. It's little things like that 
that make the biggest difference when you want to be introduced to people or you're looking for a job or X, Y, and Z. But enough about networking, even though networking is really, really, really important. I really, um, I don't want to make this whole episode about it. Next, I would put create Lightroom presets and sell them. This is so easy. You literally, it's no cost. Like, you know how like, you know, with merch, you have to pay for the blanks and you have to pay for it to um, get the, um, the stitching and, you know, the, the graphic design and shipping out and stuff like that. When you do online, like Lightroom presets, Canva, all those things like that, there's no original cost of the product. There's no cost of product. There's no cost for shipping. There's no cost for anything. It's all online and it's all free. So I would really recommend if you're starting a business, do things like that. Like even, um, sometimes it's a scam. I don't know, (laughs) but I bought these little PDFs from people, um, whether it's like, you know, how to start a business or um, how to find a quality man or, you know, whatever. They promote their shit on TikTok. And I swear I like buy this shit because it's like $20 for a PDF. It's literally just like I swear I bought it before. It's like a 10 page PDF of like information. And I spent 20 bucks on it. And like low key, was it a waste of money? Like, well, I did learn a little bit from it, but I was also, I got access to like their live stream, their like, um, their private live stream for people who have bought their things before. Um, and all that shit is free and they're just making $20 really look into, there's a lot of good websites that are really easy, um, that are just easy to set up. I think they're like $10 a month or something like that. I forget all the websites. Just Google it. You'll find it. (laughs) Like there's Squarespace, there's Wix, there's Shopify. Like there's so many ways to sell things online. Even if you just have a website and the customers Venmo you or PayPal you, you know, it's stuff like that. It's just being resourceful and finding the best ways to make money. Um, Next up, I put in enter contests, like money contests, bitch. I think the reason why I'm even a YouTuber to this day is because I entered the Nick's Face Awards. Like, you always look at contests and you're like, oh, like $10,000, I'm probably not going to win that. Everyone thinks that. Everyone thinks, oh, I'm not going to enter. Or everyone's lazy. No one really, like, they see the, you know, flyer. They see the thing, but they don't actually enter. Like, even my community had, like, a fucking, like, pumpkin decorating contest and the winner got like a hundred like dollar amazon card i'm like shit like i should have done that shit it was for kids but i was like should we just lie and say that a kid did it i don't know anyways um (laughs) enter contest and look up contest because there's always contests going on whether i think i saw like there's this tiktok contest going on where um they're uh highlighting a a a fashion designer and if you win you get your clothes sold in a certain store even like netflix contests i follow all those netflix producers and like netflix casting people um look at contests because i swear people always say that they're going to do it but not a lot of people actually do it so your chances are a lot higher than you actually think the next face awards honestly changed my life um 17 beauty smarty showdown changed my life entering contests I totally, totally recommend, especially if there's like a cash prize, bitch, like you got to do it. Um, Next up, I put create a UGC account on TikTok and feature things that you already have in your house. So UGC means user generated content and it's basically it's original brand specific content created by customers and published on social media. A lot of brands will pay for you to just make clean videos, reels, TikToks photos with just their product like for example i have this fucking like stanley cup like you can do a whole photo shoot and you know or video shoot or you using the product like oh my god for example that girl who her car got um that girl on tiktok and her car was on fire and she picked up the stanley cup and there was still ice in it stanley literally got her a new car they bought her new imagine if she didn't even post that video got millions of views and like people were like what the fuck stanley (laughs) like there's ice in the cup still and like the car was on fire and the cup was in the car um but yeah post and post so much like i feel like people are so scared especially some of my friends are like scared to post and i'm like bitch just post nobody gives a shit and if people give a shit then maybe they'll unfollow but if you're not posting anything then i'm gonna unfollow anyways like 
even my one friend that she has this one viral video and I will always hold it over her head because I was like, bitch, you better bust it. She didn't want to bust it. So basically, I made this video on her account and I was like, bitch, this shit's going to go viral. Like, you need to post this right now because the, it's like about a product and the product just came out. And she was like, no, like, I don't know. Like, and I was like, bitch, if you don't post it right now, I'm going to. So she was like, OK, whatever. I'm just going to post it. So she posted it, doesn't think about it. The next day, it literally has millions of views. And people are asking if she can um, go or if they can use her content on the Daily Mail and like all of these things. And people are wanting to interview her and like all these things. Like, it's insane. And it's so insane because she didn't want to post at the time. And if I didn't force her to basically post it and like threaten her and be like bitch if you don't post it I will I don't think that it would have gone viral as it did just post things and post things in real time like nothing matters like I feel like people are like what is the best time to post it doesn't matter like I was in like I think I was in Tokyo and I would just post whenever and the time the date it doesn't matter what time you post TikTok will just post whatever TikTok wants to push like it's just about luck and posting a lot even on um, Instagram Reels, posts on Pinterest. I saw a lot of my friends and they're making a lot of money on Pinterest. YouTube Shorts, there's so many. And you can upload one video to TikTok, YouTube Shorts, Instagram Reels, and Pinterest and see if any of them pop off. And then if they don't pop off, then repost it. Like literally, who cares? Excel gum and ASMR. Search Excel Gum on Spotify now and choose one of four ASMR audio experiences. Because everybody needs good study partners. next i put buy on aliexpress and sell for profit that's just kind of it's almost the same as drop shipping but drop shipping costs a little bit more money um post on tiktok youtube shorts pinterest and reels um create a song on garage band and pitch it to artists there's so many times where people pitch songs to me and they're actually really good and you know you pay them a fee i think if you really like a song usually the fee is about like two to ten thousand dollars which that's a fuck ton of money if that's a good song um and you get a percentage of the master which is around like 10 20 percent um i don't know i think it's worth it and literally people will just like instagram dm me um they'll go on my email they'll email me um they'll find your team they'll email them you just have to get crafty with the way that you do your things and bitch i swear to god like it's all about what you're passionate about. If I did YouTube and I wasn't getting paid like the first month that I was going into it and I was going into it for the money, I wouldn't be where I am today. Like it's the only reason why I feel like I'm successful on YouTube is because I fucking love it and I'm obsessed with it and I can watch YouTube on hours on end. I could look at analytics hours on end. I could go on calls with YouTube reps and talk about, you know, MCNs. I could talk about end screens and I cards and fucking monetization and all that random shit. I fucking love that shit. Collaborations and, um, like, bitch, all that shit I'm fucking obsessed with. You just need to find something that you're obsessed with that you could kind of do on the side. And I swear to you, as long as you're consistent with it, as long as you love it, and as long as you just get lucky at the right place at the right time, bitch, there's no way that you're not going to succeed. You just need to love what you do and do it a lot and like really push yourself and like network with people and be out there and post your things and just don't be afraid to be loud because I feel like sometimes, you know, I grew up very um, introverted and I wouldn't speak up a lot. And I also just with my family, I feel like I just like I felt like being quiet just kind of like kept the peace a lot of the times. Um, so I was just a very quiet kid and I forced myself over the past decade to become an extrovert and introduce myself to people and just basically go from an introvert to an extrovert and I do have a lot of introverted tendencies and there's times where I 
revert back to my introverted ways, but I have to force myself to be an extrovert and put myself out there and do dumb shit and fuck up and like fail a million times. And, you know, people always talk about the Kardashians and how successful they are. And I always remember this when I'm doing my own thing. The Kardashians, you think of them as so successful and they have the Birkin bags and they have the huge house and they have all the Rolls Royces, the cars and the nice things. But nobody talks about all of their failed businesses. Bitch, let me read you all of their failed businesses. (laughs) It's a lot. All the brands that were a flop created by the Kardashian Jenner family. Dash, do you remember the very first episode of Kardashians? They're working at Dash in the store. Completely failed perfect skin apparently they had a disastrous celebrity brand (laughs) i guess it was a skincare brand the kardashian card they had a kardashian credit card nobody hears about these things the kardashian chaos it's a gift shop kendall and kylie with top shop Chlorama Beauty Girl. Kimoji, do you remember that? kkw beauty and fragrances um robert kardashian Arthur George. Like whenever I feel shit about myself, I always remember the Kardashian failed businesses because bitch, imagine if Dash didn't do well and they were like, fuck, like I'm a failure. Dash is a failure. I'm not a good entrepreneur. I'm not a good businesswoman. Like no, good businesswomen don't think like that. Like business people just fail and fail and fail and fail and they go and go and go and go. Like imagine if um, Kim just like stopped at Dash. Or if she just stopped at her app. Or she just stopped at um, KKW Beauty. Like, she wouldn't have Skims that she has today. And, like, hey, maybe one day Skims is going to go completely bankrupt and nobody will give a fuck about it anymore. I bet that Kim is going to be already on to the next thing. Being an entrepreneur is all just about your mindset and, like, having that dopamine of, like, creating something and, you know, something failing and failing again and failing and then being successful and having a successful business and maybe selling it because Kylie sold a lot of um, Kylie cosmetics to, I think it was Cody and they own L'Oreal and stuff like that. I think she's trying to buy it back, actually. I don't know. Um, I feel like it's not doing as well. I haven't bought a Kylie product in a really long time or been excited about a Kylie product in a really long time. But who knows? Maybe... It one day you watching this video will have a million dollar business and you sell it and you're a millionaire. But a lot of the times if you're in the entrepreneurial mindset and you are an entrepreneur, like that feeling of creating a business and, you know, making people happy and working with people and networking, it becomes so addictive and you just want to create a business and then sell it and then create another one and then sell it and then, you know, just go and go and go and go. It's just, it's so addicting. Like the feeling of creating things and, you know, making money and, you know, helping your mom pay the mortgage. Like, bitch, like, did I ever think that I would be able to like, like pay my mom's mortgage when I was like 13 years old? Fuck no, I didn't. Like, why the fuck? Who thinks that? Like, you know, being able to pay off a car or like, being able to buy your brother a car like I did all that shit and I'm like sometimes you know life goes by so quick and you're like like you know you don't really sit there and like really admire all the things that you've done sorry (laughs) sometimes you just you let life go by I think I'm just having a moment of gratitude and you're like fuck like if when I was 13 14 15 and I just started this YouTube thing like did I think that I would be able to do all these things and like help my family the way that I've been able to help them like fuck no but it's just you know I failed so many times I've I've had I have a whole YouTube video of like all the the businesses that I've had that failed I've I had a merch company before I had girls supporting girls that completely failed I made no money on it if anything I lost money on it um you know, there's times where my YouTube wasn't doing so hot and I was like, damn, like, is this the end of my career? Do people not give a fuck about me anymore? And then there's times where I have really high highs and like people really like, you know, a certain merch collection and we do like 70,000 in sales or we do 50,000 in sales. And it's amazing because we're able to donate it all to charity and it goes to a good cause. Like nobody ever thinks, you know, you're able to do these types of things, especially me back then. But as you dive into all the other things and like you have all these other side quests and all these other businesses that you're able to you know take care of and do it just gets crazier and crazier and crazier like did I ever think that I would be living in LA and have a visa and you know live in a house like no fuck no and like maybe you don't see yourself doing that right now but I promise you bitch like you're gonna 
you're gonna level yourself up like you're just gonna <laughs> like you're gonna you know start out with like paying off maybe your student loans and you're gonna start off with you know buying maybe a nice car or paying off your car and then getting a nice house and bitch like time just flies by and then you know you're able to afford these things and it's like fucking amazing all that you have to do is just fucking start because you know i i feel like so many people are like oh i want to do a youtube channel oh i want to do this oh i want to do that um oh i want to start a business but it's like bitch your first business is I, i'm sorry but it's never gonna it's never gonna do well unless you're super fucking lucky or you you come from a rich family like your first business is not gonna do well so just start with your first one and like my first youtube video it got like no views and my first you know merch line it got like no sales and my first ever music thing i mean at first it wasn't doing the best and i would be losing money on it but you just have to keep going you have to keep putting out things you have to keep networking with people doing collabs with people introducing yourself to people and making connections and bitch it's gonna happen for you as long you just need to be in that entrepreneurial headspace and entrepreneurial mindset surround yourself with good people they say that you become like the three people that you hang around the most so you need to be around people that inspire you. I feel like the times where I feel like I'm in a rut, it's because I'm with people that drain me and I'm with people who are complaining about, you know, not having enough money, but they're not working and they're not doing anything about it. And they're not, you know, it's, I feel so inspired when I'm with people who are also entrepreneurs or people who are also, um, you know, have these like side quests or people who are also into stocks and mutual funds and, and, and whatever, or people who are also into, or they have hobbies and they do things on their spare time and they're making money on their spare time and they're just like passionate about shit. Surround yourself with people who make you feel inspired and happy. It'll also make the biggest difference, I swear. Because, bitch, people, the people that you surround yourself with, they can either make or break you. And they always say, I can tell you who you're going to be in the next five years if you just show me your three closest friends. And it's so true. Work on finding passive income, finding good friends that inspire you that you want to surround yourself with. Um, make a vision board, bitch. Like, I promise you, it'll all work out because I don't I wish that I had a video like this when I was 13 and I really wanted to make money. Um... I think another one last thing that I really wanted to add in this podcast is that you can watch all of the motivational videos that you want. Um, I saw the statistic. I don't remember what it, exactly it said, but you can watch all the motivational videos that you want. It's not going to make any difference in your life. The only thing that will make a huge impact in your life is actually scheduling. That's why I feel like life coaches and you know, things like that, they're really worth the money because they help you schedule out your goals. It's one thing to make a goal, like say you want to launch a brand or say you, what's another thing? Um, say you want to start selling graphic design things. So maybe you don't know very much about graphic design and you don't have a website, you're literally just starting from scratch. Maybe this week it's going to be, um, you know, watching Canva tutorials. And then maybe schedule in your calendar next week is um, to buy the domain on whatever it is, Squarespace, Wix, whatever website you want to go with. Um, and then the next week is, you know, applying to Facebook groups and saying, or no, the next week is maybe like creating graphic design things that you can use as on your resume. Um, and the next week is creating your resume. And then the next week is, or maybe it's the next month, you're going on Facebook market place or Facebook groups and saying, hey, I'm a graphic designer. If you guys need anything, I'm this is my rate. It's like 25 bucks per thing. And you can just PayPal me or whatever. Schedule out your goals and it makes the biggest difference. I don't know. I used to watch so many motivational speakers and it would make me motivated for like a second and then I kind of forget it the next day. But if you really go in your calendar and you go into um, what you want to do and your accomplishments and break down that huge goal that you have into little mini ones, you, it'll be way more effective than just watching motivational videos like, I don't know, like this video. 
Go into your calendar right now and schedule what you want to do and what side quests you want to do, how you want to meet people. Go into people's DMs and slide into them and be like, hey, like, I really look up to you. I would love to just shadow you for a week or be your free assistant for the week or do X, Y, Z for you for the week. Offer something. Um, go on Bumble BFF, make friends. But I swear, bitch, it's all about having these passive incomes and having these side hustles and maybe you know, having another business or, you know, if you if you know another language, there's a lot of websites where you can teach another language and be a, a tutor. There's so many ways to make money and there's so many ways to, you just have to be creative and you have to love what you do and be at the right place at the right time, bitch. I believe in you, um, but I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. <laughs> um, I know it was kind of a rambly one and, you know, it's different from all the girl talks where we talk about tampons and stuff like that but hey <laughs> this is girl talk who cares whatever we talk about everything um but i hope you guys enjoyed today's episode um i'm here if you ever need to talk every wednesday um same place same time love you guys bye and also if you're on youtube make sure to comment down below if you know if you're a woman entrepreneur and you want to connect with anybody Leave all your information down below. Let's make this like a community of like positive, uplifting women who want to become entrepreneurs and, you know, be their best selves. Um, go to Spotify, give it five stars or Apple Music, give it five stars. It helps me a lot, but I love you. Bye. Did you like that episode? I really hope that you did. Um, if you haven't already, then make sure to watch last week's episode or the week after. Just click on the links, whatever it is. Um, and I hope that you guys enjoyed. Also, be sure to subscribe because it helps me a lot. Um, but I love you and I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. Bye.